It's the weekend, it's time for some beer and it's time to take things to bits. Not that I don't take things to bits every other day of the week. However, this time it's going to be the Nightcore Tube, which is a very neat little keychain flashlight. And this uh, has a little processor in it that uh, gives it four modes. If I click it once, and I'm covering this up deliberately because it comes on at a very low intensity initially. That's the, the first mode, and it's, uh, it's useful in, a, in a, a tent or a dark room or in a power cut. You can easily read by this or see your way about. And the main advantage of the low setting is that it's going to last for supposedly 48 hours on a charge, and this thing is fully rechargeable. If you uh, double-click it, it goes up to full intensity, and it really is bright. Uh, I measured the power from uh, dissipation the LED at half a watt. It is very bright, um, and they claim it'll last for an hour at that. Third mode, if you click and hold the button continually, it goes at full power, but it's a flashlight. As soon as you let it go, it goes out again, as is the, you know, that's why flashlights are called flashlights, because literally, in, in the bad old days when, you know, battery capacity was low, you just used it as a quick flash just to see where you were going and then released it. And it's fine for that. The next mode is the double click and hold. So the first click and then you hold the second and then it starts ramping up and it ramps up to full power and then goes down to the bottom level. And if you point it at whatever you're working on, you just choose the intensity that you want to work at and let go of the button and it holds that intensity. So that's a good compromise. It lets you choose an intermediate intensity and balance battery life versus the amount of light you need. Very handy. So uh, this thing is uh, supposedly, if you look at the specs here, well for a start it's available in, uh, it's held together, this one instantly, it's held together by sticky tape, I'll, I'll tell you why in a moment. I have had it open for uh, reasons which I'll also explain, but it's available in, should we call it pink or red? Well, let's call it pink because that's the traditional colour of this channel. So it's available in pink, green, black, blue and clear. I quite like the pink one because I've just discovered that when you plug this into charge, and it's got this little rubber port over the side which does allude to it being waterproof. It claims it's waterproof. It isn't. Uh, if you plug in the charging lead, a little blue LED light's inside. And it makes the case fluoresce quite nicely. It's actually quite attractive in the dark because it is fluorescing. And when it has fully charged, that blue LED goes off to show that it is fully charged. Um. <clears throat> Let's see, is there anything else worth mentioning? It says claims up to uh, unscathed performance and unmatched performance in cold weather. It does say this IP65 dust and water resistant. I would say it's splash resistant, if, if anything. I wouldn't suggest submerging this if you submerge it. It's not really got anything other than the seam, the plastic seam here to actually keep the water out. It's not really what I'd call IP65 at all. I think water would get in. Um, yep, so it's got these modes, yep, that's fine. I, I think I've covered everything that's on here. It's a very basic little torch, but it's clever. So um, I decided to open this, and before uh, making the video I thought, I'll just find out which screwdrivers needed, and I was trying all the screwdrivers and these tiny little screws. And it's quite annoying, because they're quite long screws, they're very tightly tapped into the plastic, and they've got this super sharp head, the one that absolutely no screwdriver fits. And I tried everything. I tried the little flat blade driver and I managed with one screwdriver to get one screw out. It's, they're so tight that when you actually get it to start turning, it makes that click as it loses its grip in the plastic. It also almost feels like the head's snapping, but the heads might as well have snapped because I managed to strip the, the, the heads of three of them uh, and I had to drill them out. Uh, quite tricky, so I have to say, unless you've got the absolute perfect screwdriver for this, don't open it. If you do start opening it and you strip one of the uh, heads, then your only option at that point is to start drilling the screws out. And it's a bit messy, so I wouldn't recommend it. Just let me open mine and then you don't have to open yours. So anyway, opening it is. So uh, here's the sticky tape that I've wrapped around after we tab so I can get this open. I like this enough. And this is a huge endorsement of this light. I like this enough that I'm probably going to get another one because it is very good. And here in Isle of Man, a little flashlight like this is just superb for, you know, the sort of environment we're in here. So when you open it up, it's got the lithium cell. The lithium cell does have protection. Let me pull in some, pull in some exhibits here because I really have had this open. The lithium cell has a little circuit board here. Uh, folded down 
Well, let's pop this whole thing out then. Here's another little quirk. Uh, most of these lights have the little uh, keychain attachment thing, you know, just a little clip pressed in. This one has a double one, one on either side, and it's quite a neat effect. It gives it a sort of double... What's the best double eye sort of effect? It looks like that. It's actually quite neat. It, it suits it. It's very nice. Um, the battery has the little protection circuit board folded on and then taped over with sticky tape. And it does have the DW01 protection chip and the dual MOSFET, the 8205. Just the classic protection uh, circuitry that you'd find on many things. But some lights don't have it. It's nice that this one has it. That's really important because it will protect the battery and it lets you use it to its full potential. The circuit board itself has a little button on one side. It's got the charging port, which is quite well soldered on. It's got the pins properly soldered through here, so it shouldn't do that thing you get where you push the lead in and it just bursts and pops in. It should be quite good that way. It's uh, heat staked on to the, these two pins here. And the circuit board inside, I shall move this exhibit out of the way and bring in the next exhibit. The circuit board is actually fairly complicated. It's got the charging uh, connector here. It's got a charge regulation chip, and I think this transistor's tied in with it. 55B8, I found it referenced on a site, but uh, when I went on the site, it was one of these Chinese sites that says, you know, all the information you need, but couldn't find it. Um, and that uh, controls the charge, cu charge current to the um, battery. I should have run this down and then actually checked the charge current. I think it's about 150 milliamps, not sure. That, I think this is probably perhaps 100 to 150 milliamp hour. Is that being generous? I'm not sure. Very hard to tell uh, what capacity it is when there's no, there's no actual text on it to indicate that, or, well, you'd want proof anyway. It's got this, this control chip here, which is uh, controlled from the button in the back. The only thing on the back is the little button. Quite a nice, robust little button. It's not the cheap plastic one. It is a proper, robust little metal button. So it signals over to this chip, which is called O2BB. Not sure what that is. I don't know. I, I guess it's a dedicated custom program for this exact task. It controls the LED via this big transistor here, which I'm guessing is a FET, and uh, this 4.7 ohm resistor. Now, I measured the voltage across that, and it was 0.75 volts at full power. Um, oh, actually, which, uh, given that it's 4.7 ohms, which I also checked, it gives it about 160 milliamp. Let's uh, check the dissipation of that with the calculator. P equals IV, so that's uh, 0.16 uh, amps, times the uh, voltage across it, which was 0 0.75, equals, oh, that's fine, 120 milliwatts, absolutely fine. And it's also quite heavily heat sinked, if you will, onto this big blob of solder. But what's really impressive here is this LED is being run at about 160 milliamps. It's running about half a watt. And it's got this big, huge um, heat sink coming down onto the circuit board. It's basically the anvil, instead of just being the normal LED, which just is a stem about that size, they've actually got quite a large heat sink fin coming down so they can run at the higher power. It's also notable that it's got the gold wire, two gold wires, suggesting the sort of, well, the double bond system onto a fairly large chip. I've not actually looked at the chip in here. I'm not going to see the chip either because it's all covered in phosphor as these things usually are. And that's not revealing much. Actually, I would say it's a fairly big chip. Yep, yeah, that is a fairly big chip. Can you see it? I don't think you're going to see that. Uh, I think it's just going to swamp uh, the camera. Okay, no. Give in then. Right, so the other circuitry, there's a little uh, sort of decoupling cap just for general protection of the circuitry from glitches and spikes, I'm guessing. This transistor is uh, being controlled um, by, I'm guessing, ultimately, it's being controlled from this uh, chip here, which is a charge control chip. And then it's driving the blue LED here via this uh, 470 ohm resistor. And fundamentally, that's about it. There's really, you know, it looks fairly cluttered, but it's all functional. It's got the charge regulation. It's got the uh, the charge current regulation. It's got the um, the control processor, the little control chip that does everything. 
and then of course off board it's got the uh, lithium protection so it's all very functional and if you look at the case, the it's got this little rubber seal that does a nice job. I'd call it more of a dust cover. It just shoves into the uh, micro USB port uh, to protect it from dust ingress. The button is just satin. It will have some sealing, I suppose. The rest of it is really just relying on a lip that just sits together and... To be honest, there's so many orifices that water could get in that if you drop this in the water, I think, you know... Other than surface tension, that's the only thing that would keep water out. If there's any thermal expansion contraction, it would just suck water in. And in that case, you'd be probably better, better just sort of taking the little rubber bung out here uh, and just, you know, keeping it closed, not opening it up, but uh, just keeping it closed, putting it in a warm place to dry it out. And I suppose you'd probably see moisture inside if that happened. This is kind of aimed at the sort of adventurer, I guess. But um, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, it's quite a nice implementation of a rechargeable flashlight. And as I say, I, I like the fact that the fluorescent colours really do really catch that blue LED and uh, glow. And uh, yep, it, it seems pretty well put together. It gets top marks from me. It looks pretty good. Oh, there is one extra thing worth uh, mentioning, worth asking. Is this a real or a clone? Because although it's well made... You just never know these days. Are you going to? Maybe the there is a real uh, version, and this isn't the real version. Maybe the real version is fully waterproof. I don't want to, you know, uh, say that you know the waterproofing isn't any good. If it turns out this is a clone, I don't think it's a clone. It's very hard to tell. You just never know what you're getting these days. Either way, this one is pretty good, uh, even if it isn't uh, quite as waterproof as they might imply. But um, yeah, I do like it.